for me to be back with you. I was only gone for two weeks, but it certainly seemed like forever as far as I was concerned. I need to thank men who helped while I was gone. Brother Forrest Bomar, appreciate him teaching class. Mickey Sandlin preached two weeks ago. Eric Rucker, of course, did the devotional on that Sunday night. Likewise, Brother Afton March extended the Lord's invitation last Wednesday. And of course, Brother David McCain filled in while I was gone last Sunday. The meeting in Irving with the Beltline Road Brethren went great. Now we turn our attention to our own meeting. As has been announced this next Sunday morning, we'll begin our meeting with Brother Don Walker, and he's going to be looking at portraits of genuine faith, some character studies that if you looked at that lineup, it should be intriguing to you. You should be desiring to be here already because of who we're going to be looking at, those Bible characters. Note a couple of things, a little bit out of the ordinary for our meeting. On Monday and Tuesday nights from 6 to 6.45, there's going to be meal provided here, Monday night soup and sandwiches. Also Tuesday night, hot dogs, I guess chili dogs or something like that. But this will help those who are trying to grab a bite to eat, get here. I think it'll help our younger parents with younger children to be able to come and to enjoy that time of fellowship, feed the children, and of course hear a great message from the Word of God. So let's be looking forward to all of these events. I know it's already been announced, but again, the door knocking this afternoon, 1245. It'll give you time after this morning's sermon to go grab a bite to eat and to come back and to knock some doors in view of the gospel meeting. I know that Dale usually does this on Saturday, but he's trying Sunday afternoon. So again, those who can, please come for that great event. Well, our study this morning is going to be entitled, A Defining Moment. I love this title, A Defining Moment. In fact, I started thinking in preparing this lesson, you know, maybe somewhere in the future I'll do a series of lessons, maybe a class, Defining Moments in the Lives of Bible Characters. Now, you other Bible class teachers don't steal that title. You know me, I'm always looking at things that if it merits one study, it deserves an entire series. And so a defining moment, what do we mean by that? We've all heard the phrase, but what exactly are we talking about in a defining moment? Well, think with me for just a moment. Here's what we're talking about. Here's what it means. Here's some definitions. A defining moment, a point at which the essential nature or character of a person, group, etc., is revealed or identified. Now, read this again only in view of us individually. A point at which the essential nature or character of a person is revealed or identified. That's what we're talking about to each and every one of us, myself included. A defining moment for each and every one of us. Notice another definition. An event, action, or decision that results in a significant change for a person, institution, community, country, or the world. Again, while that is expanded, what we're talking about is that event, action, or decision that results in a significant change for a person, for you, for me. Well, notice an occurrence that typifies or determines all related events that follow. And another one, the point at which a situation is clearly seen to start to change. Well, we've all heard about defining moments. We've all had defining moments. I'm not suggesting at this time that as you go through life, you're going to have one and only one defining moment. I believe we have many defining moments. You know, as I look at my life, 
my parents moving the family from Michigan to Texas. I think that was, looking back, a defining moment. I know in moving from Michigan to Texas when I obeyed the gospel of Christ. That was a defining moment. Graduating high school, graduating college, a defining moment. Marrying Julie, becoming a husband, that's a defining moment. Becoming a parent, a defining moment. Deciding to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, a defining moment. Well, your life's no different than mine. You can look back and you can say, here's some defining moments in my life. Well, notice what Napoleon said. I think he captures what we're talking about. Notice this. In every battle, there are ten minutes in which hangs the fate of nations. Those ten minutes, those are defining moments, aren't they? As he said, in that time, that's what hangs the fate of nations. And I believe the direction that we take as individuals, it is set on course by defining moments. Sometimes we get back on course by defining moments. Well, notice this. Defining moments as we can see from the definitions, are transforming. These moments always result in radical change. They result in radical change. They are transforming. Take your Bibles, go back to the scripture that was read for our scripture reading. Notice what David says here. I think this is a defining moment as he states in verse 30, verse 30, look at this. He says, I have chosen the way of truth. Your judgments I have laid before me. Now notice that. There's a defining moment. I have chosen the way of truth. Some translations say the faithful way. But a choice has been made. A course has been set. And look what he goes on to say now in verses 31 and 32. I cling to your testimonies. O Lord, do not put me to shame. I will run the course of your commandments, for you shall enlarge my heart. You see that progression? I have chosen. I cling. I will run. A defining moment that, again, translates into change, transformation, a radical change. You remember when Esther responded to Mordecai? I will go before the king, which is not according to law, and if I perish, I perish. She took that step of faith, and I don't think her life was ever the same. She had entered a deeper relationship. Well, I know this. She changed the course for Israel. They were about to be annihilated. But yet I'll go before the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. You can find defining moments throughout the scriptures. And once again, when people used those moments as they should, their lives changed. And again, changed for the better. Well, notice this. Thus, these moments are important, valuable, precious, and foundational. Foundational because they shake us at our very foundation. You remember in the book of Psalms, Psalm 119 again, verses 59 and 60. David said, he said, I, I looked at my ways. He said, you know, I made haste and did not delay to keep thy commandments. Well, David had a defining moment. It was a moment of change, a moment of transformation. He considered his ways. He turned his feet to God's testimonies. He made haste and did not delay to keep God's commandments. That's what we ought to do as we go through life. We need to be looking for opportunities for these defining moments. To help us. Remember Ephesians 5 and verse 16, or verse, yeah, verse 16? Redeeming the time for the days are evil. Remember Hosea 10 and verse 12? 
It is time to seek the Lord. These defining moments bring us to that point, to that place in our lives. It's time to seek the Lord. Look at what I've been doing. And I need to start doing what I ought to do. Loving the Lord, obeying His will. Seeking to please Him in all things. Laboring in His vineyard. Consider also, today, this very time, can be a defining moment in our lives. You know, if we approached every Bible class, every assembly, as we ought all the time, I think we'd find more defining moments. Sometimes we come and is our habit, we sit down, we pull out a song book, we sing the songs, we can't tell you now what songs we sang. We listen to prayers, we put our amen, but sometimes we haven't heard. The lesson begins, we put our minds in neutral. We sort of listen, but again, the child in front of us captures our attention. Something else does. We're thinking about where we're going for lunch, so on and so forth. We're missing many defining moments in our lives because at times we're not paying attention as we ought. Remember Judges 5, verses 15 and 16? It's talking about the divisions of Reuben. And it says, There were great resolves of heart. And then there were great searchings of heart. That's what it takes to have this defining moment. A great searching of our heart. A great resolve. Again, remember, these times are transforming. These times change us. A radical change takes place in our life. You remember what Jesus told his disciples? Luke 9 and verse 44, Let these words sink down into your ears. When we listen like that, now we have at least the opportunity to hear as we ought and maybe to be confronted by Bible truths that allow us to change our way, to define the moment. It's not really the moment that is being defined, is it? It's us. We are the ones that are defined at that time. Are we going to be obedient or disobedient? Are we going to be sincere or hypocritical? Are we going to be humble or are we going to continue to be proud? Defining moments, this very time can provide that for us. Let's notice how. A defining moment for those who need to obey Christ and become a Christian. In every audience of this side, size, typically there are those who never obeyed the gospel. Different reasons. You know, for everyone who hasn't, you probably have another reason, a different reason. But this should be a defining moment in the lives of those. You know, we've already talked about obeying Christ, obviously a defining moment in my life, a defining moment in your life. If there's one moment that impacts us, I guess more greatly than any other moment, it ought to be that. Think with me for just a moment about Saul better known as Paul. You know, in Acts the ninth chapter and in Acts 26, the question is asked, Saul, is it not hard for you to kick against the goads? Jesus is saying, Saul, isn't it hard? Isn't it hard everywhere you go, you're facing truth? Isn't that hard to kick against it? To kick against the goads? And I'd ask that question to those who have never obeyed the gospel. Many know what needs to be done. You've been in settings like this and you've heard the truth proclaimed. Isn't it hard to sit through truth time and time again and simply ignore it? Saul had many defining moments. One that I think we miss was the death of Stephen. At the end of Acts 7, Remember when they stoned Stephen, they put their cloaks at the feet of a young man named Saul. It made an impact upon Saul. Later on in Acts 22 and verse 20, Saul himself, Paul, will talk about Stephen. 
the blood of that faithful martyr Stephen. He never forgot that. Again, remember, isn't it hard, Saul, to kick against the goads? Isn't it hard to hear the truth and to see the truth lived by people like Stephen? The road to Damascus, when Jesus appeared to Saul, a defining moment. When Ananias came with the Word of God, remember back in Acts 11 and verse 14, it's the same as it was with the household of Cornelius. These are words by which you will be saved. It's the gospel. Romans 1 and verse 16, God's power unto salvation. Ananias stood before Saul. Why did he delay? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling upon the name of the Lord. Again, this should be a defining moment. For those who have contemplated that decision, you've thought about it, you've possibly even prayed concerning that, oh, it's time to stop praying about that and do it. Get after it. Obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. A defining moment. Go through the book of Acts. And you can see so many who came to that point in their life, a defining moment. Well, it also should be a defining moment for those who need to repent and come back to the Lord. Think again of one example, the prodigal son. In Luke 15 and verse 17, you remember the Bible talks about him, the prodigal, coming to his senses. He woke up in the pig's pen. A defining moment. What am I going to do? Who am I going to be from this point on? And remember, he's there in the pig's pen. He comes to himself. And he says, how many of my father's hired men have more than enough bread? And I'm starving here with hunger. Remember what he says? I will get up and I will go to my father. I'll say to my father, I've sinned in heaven's sight, in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired men. Repentance from the heart. A defining moment. In Jeremiah 8 and verse 6, the sad reality in that book was the people weren't paying attention. Jeremiah 12 and verse 11, no man laid it to heart. Talking about the situation Jeremiah's preaching. No man laid it to heart. So, of course, Jeremiah 8 and verse 6, no man repented of his wickedness, saying, what have I done? In fact, look at those people. In Jeremiah 2 and verse 20, we will not serve. Jeremiah 6 and verse 16, we will not walk therein. Jeremiah 6 and verse 17, we will not hearken. Their whole attitude was, we will not. That's the last thing we're going to do. But you know what God says, that He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You know, unless we repent, we're going to perish. That's the reality. In Luke 13 and verse 3, that's what Jesus said. Except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Again, in Acts, the 17th chapter and verse 30, He's commanded all men everywhere to repent. That's what some need to do today, a defining moment. As we let these words sink down into our heart, as we consider our ways, if they're not right, we do as David said. We turn our feet to His, God's testimonies. We make haste and do not delay to keep His commandments. Well, look at this. A defining moment for all of us regarding the Lord's work. Every one of us. Remember Isaiah? We'll use him as that lone example again. Isaiah 6 and verse 8. Here am I, Lord, send me. That's in answer to the question, whom shall we send? Whom will go for us? Here am I, Lord, send me. Write down three verses. These are important verses. Because when we understand this regarding the Lord's work, guess what? We're going to be involved in the Lord's work. Nehemiah 1 and verse 5, Nehemiah talks about our great and awesome God. But a great God. 
And that great God of Nehemiah 1 and verse 5 has given Nehemiah a great work to do. Nehemiah 6 and verse 3. I'm doing a great work. I cannot come down. Why should the work stop? Well, I leave it and come down to you. So a great God, again, given a great work. And you know what that results in? Nehemiah 12 and verse 43. Great joy. That should impact each and every one of us to give the very best that we have for the Lord. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 58. Now think with me for these last statements. A defining moment is a decisive moment. It results in transformation, in radical change, because a decision is made. We're going to make that change. We're going to do what we need to do. A defining moment is a decisive moment. You remember Joel 3 and verse 14? Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. You remember Joshua 24 and verse 15? Choose you this day whom you'll serve, but as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. You remember 1 Kings 18 and verse 21? How long do you halt between two opinions? If God be God, serve Him. If Baal be God, serve Him. A defining moment is a decisive moment. In Exodus 10 and verse 3, How long do you refuse to humble yourself before me? God asked that to Pharaoh. In Exodus 16 and verse 28, How long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? God asked that to Moses. A defining moment is always a decisive moment. That's why in Hebrews 3 and verse 7, Today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your heart. 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 2, Now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. And think about this thought. Defining moments now rejected will later be regretted. If not in this life, I know this in eternity. When we stand before God Almighty and we haven't done what we ought to do, but yet we remember I had opportunities. I had moments that should have defined my life differently, and I didn't take advantage of those moments. You remember Matthew 16? In Matthew 16, verse 25, in that context concerning the rich man and the beggar full of sores, child, remember. That's what Father Abraham told him. Child, remember. Again, he knew what he could have done. He knew the opportunities he had. I think I said Matthew. It's really in Luke's account. But think about that. Child, remember. Again, defining moments now rejected will later be regretted. Do you notice this? Defining moments ignored and passed over have a way of becoming declining moments. It's true like in Jeremiah 7 and verse 24, we go backward and not forward. It's a moment in time that we should make the right choice and we don't. So we decline. We fall from our own steadfastness. 2 Peter 3 and verse 17. But let's end with this thought. Defining moments seized and acted upon become refining moments moments. They bring out the very best in us. They make us better. They make us stronger. They make us more useful to the Lord in His kingdom. They draw us closer to God Almighty. A defining moment. When we hear truth, when we're asked to make a decision, Maybe some need to obey Christ, His commandments. You need to put Him on in baptism this morning. What are you going to do with that? 
Maybe you need to be restored to your first love. You need to repent and come home. Or maybe we just need to change our outlook concerning our great God and His great work and become a part of that work. Will you let this morning be a defining moment in your life, a time that you look back and you say, you know what? I chose at that time the faithful way. I'm going to cling to my God. I'm going to run the way of His testimonies and nothing's going to deter me. Absolutely nothing will stop me. If you need to, won't you make that decision this morning right now? Don't put it off. Don't say, you know, it makes a lot of sense and I've been pondering that, I've been contemplating that. And, then, and one of these times, again, you can see a lot of defining moments passed over, misused in the Bible. Some more convenient season. Acts 24 and verse 25, Felix. Or Agrippa, almost. Almost you persuade me to become a Christian. Paul will go on to say, not almost, but all together. I want you to be all together such as I am, except for these chains. A defining moment demands a decision. What decision are you going to make? Will you come? I hope so. If you stand in need of responding to the Lord's invitation, please, won't you come right now while together we 